Hi folks, so today I'm going to show you how to program the sound that you just heard on the Mini Moog Model D. Now I know a lot of you might not have a Mini Moog at home, but I'm sure most of you have the VST version and you can get very close to the same sound on that VST. So I'm going to go through the mechanics of what makes a good funk bass sound and also how to approach playing that sound because that's almost more important to be honest. You know, you can have the same sound, two different people, you hear one person play it and go, oh, that sound sucks. Hear another person play it, you go, oh, that's super funky. You know, it's, it depends on how you play the sound. So I'm going to try to give you a few pointers there. I want to thank you all for your support, by the way. There's almost 50,000 of you now, which is amazing. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do it now. Click on the alert bell. It really helps keep this thing rolling. Um, yeah, let's get cracking. Okay, so the main thing about this sound is the fact you get this transient and then the low end afterwards. Uh, and you want to use that when you're playing it in legato mode. So instead of just everything, you can, you can glide between the notes. It's quite forgiving in a way, you know, even if your rhythm's a little bit off, it's going to sound smooth. Of course, you can add portmento as well. But you really don't need to because that the legato gives you that effect anyway. The other thing I think to say about this sort of sound is you've got to make sure you give the low notes their full value when you play. Because otherwise, you know, don't forget you're playing a bass sound. So it's got to fill up some bottom end, even though the sort of part I'm playing there earlier was very busy. You've got to make the longer notes really down the bottom end. So the top you know, the right hand in this case, if you're doing it two handed, is playing the licks part of it. And the bottom end is filling out that space at the bottom that you're going to need in the track. Otherwise, it just end up sounding fiddly, but not, you know, meaty. It's got to be meaty. And you notice there I'm doing loads of trills. You know, I tend to do this a lot in my playing and it really suits this sort of funk bass sound. Uh, because of the legato nature, you don't get the transient every time, so it sounds like a, a nice little grace note. It's a good effect. And then octaves is a good effect as well with this. When you want to be punchy and on the beat, So there you can see I'm playing octaves and I'm playing the odd little rhythmic thing in between it just to make it feel more funky. You know, when you've got a beat going on that, those little grace notes just feel pretty funky. So on the lower notes, you're hitting them quite solid. Getting the chunk and at the top, often, Hitting from one note to another is cool. Let me put a beat so you can hear it a bit better. Let me do a combination now. You're hearing the low notes are longer and you're going to hear the trills and the little grace notes up into the higher ones.
And obviously, sometimes the arrangement might demand a more low key role for the bass. And that's where you can use that legato sound again by not really getting the transients. If you turn the sustain level up a bit more there, then you're going to get more tone. So you can get. So let's try that with a beat. Then the busier part. You know, so in a song you might alternate from that busier part as well to these longer notes. But the way this sound is set up, it'll still fill out the bass end really nicely. And then when you get to the frillier part, you still got the funk. And then generally with this sound, obviously tweak it to your own tastes. You know, you might want a little bit less emphasis on the filter. Give you a nice rounder sound. Really depends on the track. You know, you've got to tailor it to fit the rest of the music, really. That's the whole point with sound design. It's not just the sound itself. It's the sound in the track. You know, I, I see a lot of people going, oh, it's bread and butter sounds. What's the point? Boring. But actually, that's what most tracks need is bread and butter sounds, not something that makes a million noises. It's just useless in a track. It's about tailoring your sound for the music. One oscillator might work better. You know, less nose might work better. So listen to the track, you know, what does it need? Um, a good thing is to, to try to check out the frequencies of other things like the kick drum. If the kick drum's got a lot of low end, then maybe the bass doesn't need so much low end. You know, if the kick drum's more punchy and middly, then you want the bass to sit below it and, and have a, a real meaty low frequency to fill out the track. Well, I hope you got a few ideas from that. Until next time. Bye.